All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and thanks for listening in. This is the daily morning update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 7th of July. The number of coronavirus cases is rising at the highest rate yet here in India. Yesterday morning, the health ministry reported yet another 25,000 cases, taking the total to just under 7 lakh. India has now moved past Russia into the third spot globally for the highest number of cases. And the finance ministry believes that the high degree of uncertainty due to the COVID-19 pandemic may adversely impact business sentiment and force companies to delay investments. In its monthly report, it said that the impact of the pandemic on the Indian economy is rapidly evolving, driving market volatility on a daily basis as reflected in movements of the volatility index in the domestic equity market and the economic policy uncertainty index. Besides the impact on investments, the finance ministry believes that an adverse impact on trade is expected due to virus-induced supply chain disruptions, weak external demand and persistent global trade tensions. Meanwhile, India Ratings and Research expects the pandemic to worsen corporate stress in the next two financial years in terms of debt. Stressed corporate debt could rise to 18.2% of outstanding debt by March 2022 from 11.57% currently, according to a statement from the rating agency. It believes, in fact, that about 1.67 lakh crore worth of debt by the 500 private companies with the highest debt could turn delinquent in the current financial year and in the next one, owing to the COVID-19 pandemic and its associated stress. This is over and above the 2.54 lakh crore rupees worth of debt estimated to turn bad during this period as projected before the onset of the pandemic. So you may have heard that HUL launched Glow and Handsome Cream for men after dropping the word fair from the name. Now, In an interim relief to the company, the Bombay High Court yesterday said that Imami, which has its own Glow and Handsome cream, will have to give HUL seven days prior notice before initiating legal proceedings on trademarks. Justice B.P. Kolabwala was hearing an application filed by HUL under the Trademarks Act seeking injunction against Imami from issuing groundless threats in HUL's words, in view of the use of its trademark, Glow and Handsome. More details on the website bloomberquint.com. In the finance space, Bajaj Finance has marginally expanded its customer base and loan book in the quarter ended June, according to a filing with the exchanges. More importantly, though, the company said it may have considered additional accelerated provisioning for COVID-19 in the first quarter of the financial year as well to further strengthen its balance sheet. The Securities and Appellate Tribunal has refused to stay the proceedings initiated by market regulator SEBI seeking to impose a higher penalty on India ratings and research in the ILNFS matter. Regarding an appeal against the SEBI order imposing a 25 lakh penalty on India ratings, the tribunal directed the ratings agency to deposit the amount with the regulator within four weeks, which would be subject to the result of the appeal. In other news, PTM along with its founder Vijay Shekhar Sharma will acquire 100% in Raheja QBE General Insurance Company according to a notification by the company yesterday. In the statement, Paytm said it would acquire the 51% stake currently owned by Prism Johnson and the 49% stake by QBE Australia in the general insurance company subject to approvals from the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. In things to watch out for this week, US President Donald Trump is apparently preparing to issue a series of executive orders on a range of subjects, including China, manufacturing, immigration and prescription drug pricing. According to his chief of staff, Mark Meadows, who said this yesterday, 
and that could have a bearing on global equity markets. But as of now, equity markets are heading from strength to strength, especially the ones in the US where stocks surged at the start of the week, led by tech stocks. The Dow climbed over 450 points and the Nasdaq ended higher by 2.2%. Stock markets in the Asia-Pacific region, though, have had a bit of a cautious start today. The Nikkei 225 was flat, while the other two early rises were higher by about half a percent. And with that, it's over to Agam Akil for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning, Agam. How are we looking today? Good morning, Alex, and good morning, listeners. Well, based on the SGX Nifty futures, which are trending higher by around 40 odd points, it seems like we may see an extension of the gains that we saw yesterday in opening today. We have a long list of companies which have come up with their first quarter updates. And right at the top, we have Bajaj Finance, where the company has said that it may consider additional accelerated provisioning for COVID-19 to further strengthen its balance sheet. Its AUM under moratorium has reduced from 27% as on April 30th to, well, 15.5% as on 30th June. That, of course, is a positive. Consolidated liquidity surplus was approximately 17,600 crores and capital adequacy ratio stood at 26.4%. Deposits grew 33% and AUM grew 7% on a year-on-year -year basis for the first quarter. Similarly, Bandhan Bank has also just suggested that in its first quarter, so loans and advances grew 18% and deposits grew 35%. Its CASA ratio stood at 37.1% versus 36.8% sequentially. And subsequent to Unlock 1, the collection in micro banking loan vertical has shown positive traction from the 1st of June. Moving on to fast-moving consumer goods company Goldrich Consumer Products in its first quarter update says that at a consolidated level, it expects an absolute sales to be marginally lower compared to the quarter year on year, but it also expects mixed single digit volumes growth essentially driven by resurgence of household insecticides category, which continue to show strength in terms of online demand. Now, we also have two companies which are in focus on the back of rights issues. We have Sriram Transport Finance Board, which has approved a rights issue of 1500 crores at an issue price of 570 rupees per share. And the rights entitlement ratio is at three equity shares for 26 held. And uh, of course, the record date for this particular rights issue is 10th July. And it's also said that the promoter group has undertaken taken to fully subscribe to their rights entitlement and shall not renounce their rights. An issue price is at a discount of 18% to the closing price yesterday. Similarly, PVR has set its rights issue price at 784 rupees per share, which is at a 25% discount to yesterday's closing price. And the rights entitlement ratio is at seven shares for every 94 shares held with a record date also in this case set on 10th of July. Now these are just some of the stocks we can watch out for as we move into trade today but don't forget to go through our morning edition of All You Need to Know only on BloombergQuid.com. Thanks Agam and as always thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthew signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoy listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.